Hi, I'm Dave from the Gadget Helpline, and I'm here today to show you the new Galaxy Nexus smartphone built by Samsung and Google, which showcases the latest version of Android, version 4.0, also known as Ice Cream Sandwich. So we've got the box here. I'm just going to take off the lid. And here we have the smartphone. I'm just going to take this aside, and we'll take a look at the handset itself. It's pretty simple, it's nothing over the top. We've got a large 4.7 inch Super AMO LED screen, which is the same as the Samsung uh, Galaxy S2. Uh, it has a 720p HD resolution on the screen, so it's fantastic for games and videos, uh, web browsing and everything else there. The screen's actually coated in uh, an oleophobic coating, which makes it uh, water resistant, uh, scratch resistant as well. You can, in fact, run a key over the screen and uh, it doesn't, doesn't put a scratch on the handset. So if we have a look around the phone, it's got a tapered design which goes from thinner to thicker at the end. And the, the screen itself, I don't know if you can see there, is actually curved, which is, uh, makes it quite nice for when you're on calls. It feels good when it's against the side of your face. You've got the volume rocker here. There's nothing on the top at all. And on the side we have the power button and uh, connecting pins for a docking station or a car dock. On the bottom here, we've got the 3.5mm headphone jack and a micro USB for charging or connecting to PC. And if we have a look on the back, we've got a speaker, the Samsung and the Google logos. It's a joint venture by the two. And you've got the 5 megapixel camera and the LED flash there. So the Galaxy Nexus has also got 16 gigabytes of internal storage. Unfortunately, there's no room for expansion. There's no micro SD card slot. It does have a dual core 1.2 GHz processor and also an NFC chip for wireless communications, which we'll come on to later. So uh, we're just going to bring on the handset here. We're going to take a look at the, uh, the operating system in action. We'll run through some of the features of Android 4 Ice Cream Sandwich with you. Uh, so we're just going to boot up the handset now. So here's the new boot sequence, which is, uh, I think it's only going to be on this handset itself because it's the, the only device to run the pure version of Android 4. It's got no customization from, from the likes of HTC or Samsung on it. So this is the first screen we see, and we're into the lock screen. So it kind of resembles Honeycomb, which is the version 3 of Android, which is used on tablets. If you tap and hold on the lock, you can take it to unlock the device, or you can also go across to the camera itself. Uh, this is the same if you take the phone out of your pocket. You can really quickly just swipe it straight across to the camera, bring it across, and you can take a picture nice and quickly. And that's how quick the camera is on the Galaxy Nexus, which is thanks to uh, the 5 megapixel sensor on the back and the fast 1.2 gigahertz dual-core processor. Another feature of Android 4, we've also got panorama here. So you can see you've got the still camera, you've got the video, and you've got panorama. That's built into Android 4.0. Uh, it enables you to easily take a picture. I don't think we're going to be able to do it here due to the room. But you can just simply move the, uh, the phone around and it stitches everything together for you into a nice panoramic photo. So uh, that's the camera application. We'll just come back out to the home screen. Now, with Android 4.0, uh, no longer will you have physical or touch buttons on the phone itself. There's actually now three touch buttons on the screen. So you've got the back arrow, you've got the home icon, and you've also got recently opened applications, which is a feature that's taken from Honeycomb, which you'll see on tablets uh, nowadays. So Google have developed a series of new features with Android 4, Ice Cream Sandwich. And one of the first ones we're going to show you is folders. It's something that's been around on rival smartphones, such as the iPhone for a while. It's actually the first, the first time this has been on Android. So from the off, Google have created a default folder, just here on the home screen if you tap it. In there you've got the default Android applications such as Gmail, Maps, the Android Market and uh, access to Google Plus, the new social network. So you can open an app like that, you can tap away from it to close it. You can actually create your own folders just by tapping and holding on an app and dragging it into another one. That creates a folder which you can then open and you can name, so we'll call it Games, tap away and again and there's your new folder. You can add, I believe, 12 applications into a folder, and you can have folders just like icons on your home screen. So that's a pretty cool new feature in Android 4. So Google have transformed the home page of Android. At the top of every home page, you've now got the Google search bar, which you can also tap on the microphone to use voice search. At the bottom, you've got your four default icons, phone, contacts, messaging, and the browser. These can be changed, 
and in the middle you've got the menu icon so it's changed from previous versions of Android. So if we open up the menu we have apps here you can scroll through as many pages of apps as you may have added and you've also got widgets which is pretty cool it's a different take on how you add widgets from before in previous versions of Android you can add your widgets to the home page from here uh, including email, Facebook, uh, widgets for your contacts and Google Plus so you can tap on these simply by tapping and holding on one and dragging it to a home screen or a space of home screen that suits you so that's the weather widget added Another cool feature of Android 4.0, again to do with widgets, is the fact that you can resize your widgets to suit your taste and to suit your home screen. So if we add the Gmail widget here, we'll add it to a screen with a bit more space, we can show this off. So if we put it here, and we'll select the inbox to be shown there. If you then tap and hold your finger on your widget, you get little icons on each side with which you can drag and reshape and resize your widget, which is really helpful. I found it helpful to use uh, two widgets, one for Gmail and one for regular mail, on one home screen. And that's a feature taken from Android 3.2 Honeycomb, which was on tablet devices. Using this little touch icon at the bottom of the screen here, we can view our most recently used applications. You can scroll through the list, and you can tap on an application easily, open the application and continue using it from where you left off. It's also a really useful way to manage your applications. Uh, taken from the uh, web OS sort of styling, uh, you can actually swipe away an application just like that and close it. That's going to save your battery and uh, it's a really useful feature again with Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich. In keeping with the new features of Android 4 on the home screen, we'll show you the new notifications bar. Drag it down from the top of the screen as you did with all previous other versions of Android. You've got quick and easy access to settings in here and you see your notifications listed. As we've just showed you with the recently open applications window, you can again swipe away your notifications to delete them, which is much easier than either tapping and holding and deleting or tapping some other icon as with various other Android phones. So if we bring that notifications bar down again, we'll show you easy access into settings. It's quite similar to other versions of Android, uh, but Google have made it simpler. Um, so as before, you would have wireless and networks, you would go into Wi-Fi, then Wi-Fi controls, you simply have toggles for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and you can then, once they're on, tap onto Wi-Fi and view your networks and your settings for Wi-Fi. It makes the home screen and the screen of settings less cluttered. Uh, we found it quite easy to use. So uh, that's another, another cool feature, another bit of redesigning done by Google. Another main feature of Android 4 and one that can be used on the Galaxy Nexus uh, utilizes NFC or Near Field Communications uh, and it's a feature called Android Beam. That's a really cool feature, it allows you to simply touch two Android 4 phones together and uh, you can simply transfer a piece of data wirelessly. It's kind of like Bluetooth but without the need for searching, putting in passwords. As long as you've got two devices that have an NFC chip and uh, the Android 4 operating system. For instance, if you're viewing a website and you want to show it to your friend, you simply tap the two phones together, usually on the back, and your friend will receive a request for that transfer and be able to view the web page. The same goes with transferring files, so you can do it with photos and videos. So again, that's a really cool feature, uh, one in Android 4. So next up, we're going to show you the brand new camera app in Android 4, which is on this handset. So if we open it up here, just take a look, we've got manual zoom, which you can use tap and drag. You've got the option to switch around to the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera. As we showed before, here we've got icons to change to video camera, which is full HD, 1080p, uh, the still camera, which is 5 megapixels, and the panoramic shot. So here we've got the option for settings. If we tap that, it slides up, gives us options for flash, uh, the white balance, which you can have to auto or for various uh, lighting conditions, the exposure setting, and the scene setting. So you can customize your, your snaps before you take them, which helps to make sure you get the best possible picture. So we're just going to show you here, uh, it's also got autofocus, so we're just going to test this against the box. You can simply tap in any area of the screen and the camera will automatically focus on that particular point. You can then simply tap the shutter icon, take your photo and it appears up here. If you then tap on your photo, you can then see Google has added a multitude of sharing options, so you've got text messaging, Bluetooth, Picasa, Flickr, Google+, Facebook and more. So that's a really easy way to quickly share your photos as soon as you take them. Uh, and 
that actually coupled with the fact that you can unlock the phone straight into the camera makes it really easy to take a picture on the go when you need and upload it to Facebook or send it to a friend really quickly. One of the coolest features of Android 4 and the Galaxy Nexus from Samsung has definitely got to be face unlock. It's a new way of unlocking the handset and simply when you press the power button, as we can see here, it'll bring up the screen and scan for a face that is, uh, it's been preset. Once it recognises you, as it's just done, it will unlock the handset and go straight into the operating system. It's really cool, it's an awesome thing to show your mates and impress them with, but it can be a bit of a pain. Sometimes it doesn't quite catch you if you don't get it the phone at the angle that you've set it up with and in low light conditions. However, you can set the phone to unlock with a, a pin unlock, a numerical four pin unlock, or a pattern unlock as with other Androids, so you can bypass the face unlock if needed. So that's the new Samsung Galaxy Nexus and an overview of the brand new Ice Cream Sandwich Android 4.0 operating system. It's got some great new features as we've showed you. You've got the panoramic shot, the new way to manage your applications and the face unlock. The phone itself it has got a great quality big screen. It's nice to hold, it's comfortable to use on calls, it's fast and the operating system as we've said is great. It's worth noting however, so far since the phone has been on sale for a couple of weeks now, some users have reported issues with the volume dropping out. Uh, when this happens, the volume keys, the rockers on the side here, become unresponsive. Google have notified customers and they've also let us know that this is a software bug and it's something that they can fix quite easily and it will be done using a software update which you can download via the phone in the settings menu and it should be available during the first two weeks of December. The handset's available now SIM free for around about £520. You can also get it on contract for free for around about £35 per month on 24 month contracts. For more news and videos, don't forget to check out gadgethelpline.com. Follow us on Twitter, gadget underscore helpline, or add our page on Facebook for more information. Thanks for watching.